Ground loops represent a critical interference source in amateur radio. They form when different grounding points within a station have a slight voltage difference, causing currents to circulate along unintended paths. These currents can be subtle, but their effects, especially in high-frequency setups, are often severe. Typical culprits include long cable run, improper chassis bonding, and shared power sources. Even nearby transformers or AC mains wiring can introduce voltages that lead to loops. Recognizing ground loops as both a performance and safety issue sets the stage for effective troubleshooting and system design improvements. Ground loops arise when electrical systems develop more than one grounding path, and these paths do not share the same potential. When voltage differences exist, unintended current begins to circulate along interconnected equipment, forming a loop. In amateur radio, this often happens when equipment is powered from separate outlets or grounded to different rods. Long cable runs further complicate the matter, offering high resistance and greater exposure to electromagnetic fields from nearby sources. These factors, when combined, set up the perfect conditions for noisy, persistent ground loops. Understanding these root causes is essential for preventing interference and maintaining signal integrity. The symptoms of ground loops in ham radio setups are often unmistakable and problematic. A low-frequency hum, typically 50 or 60 hertz, is a classic indicator, especially into audio lines. This noise can drown out weak signals, making intelligible reception difficult. Beyond hum, ground loops contribute to RF interference by forming inadvertent antennas through interconnected cables and chassis. This can raise the noise floor and allow noise to enter the signal chain at various stages. Additionally, persistent ground currents can overstress equipment, creating erratic behaviors or even component failures. These loops may also carry high-voltage transients during surges, presenting safety risks. Finally, they interact with RF signals to create intermodulation distortion a threat to signal purity. Chokes are one of the most practical tools for mitigating ground loops in amateur radio setups. By presenting high impedance to unwanted high-frequency currents, they block RF energy that might otherwise circulate through unintended ground paths. This effectively reduces ground loop currents, introducing the characteristic 60 or 50 hertz hum that plagues many systems. Common mode chokes and ferrite beads are the most frequently used devices often placed strategically on coaxial cables at antenna junctions or between equipment. The role is not to replace grounding, but to complement it. When combined with proper grounding techniques, isolation transformers, and balanced cables, chokes become the cornerstone of an interference-free ham shack. Proper use of chokes enhances signal integrity and ensures that transmitted and received signals remain free of spurious noise and interference. Understanding where and how to install them is essential knowledge for every serious ham radio operator. Preventing ground loops in amateur radio stations involves a multifaceted approach to grounding and proper electrical engineering practices. A star grounding topology ensures that all equipment shares common ground references, reducing the risk of circulating loop currents. Equally important is the use of isolation between devices like DI boxes and isolators on audio or data lines, which allow signal flow while physically breaking problematic electrical paths. Antennas must be properly grounded and should include RF chokes at connection points to divert high-frequency currents safely to ground. Ongoing testing and diagnostic tools such as spectrum analyzers ensure the system remains stable, especially after storms or equipment changes. Together, these practices offer a comprehensive solution that boosts performance, reduces noise, and enhances the longevity and safety of radio equipment. Real-world experiences highlight just how prevalent and disruptive ground loop issues can be in amateur radio. In homebrew stations, operators often encounter unexplained Hummer interference, only to find later that their chassis grounding wasn't unified or that multiple ground references exist. Multi-unit stations face an even greater challenge. Different vendors often implement diverse grounding philosophies, which increases the odds of potential imbalances. The solution? Many operators have found success by reorganizing their system into a single point star configuration, strategically placing RF chokes and integrating ground loop isolators. Not only do these changes mitigate ground loops, but they also significantly reduce the system's noise floor, enabling cleaner communication, especially for weak signal reception. Such cases serve as a practical reminder of the value of grounding practices in RF engineering. 
In wrapping up our discussion on ground loops in amateur radio, it's clear that these electrical anomalies are not merely theoretical nuances. They're practical challenges that can severely impair system performance. From understanding how ground loops form to applying targeted fixes like chokes, single point grounding, and isolation devices, we've covered how thoughtful and well-implemented strategy makes measurable differences. Regular maintenance, along with diagnostic monitoring, ensures your setup stays optimized, even as equipment evolves or environmental conditions change. Ultimately, minimizing ground loops leads to cleaner communications, safer operation, and longer equipment life. For any serious amateur radio operator, adopting these best practices isn't just beneficial, it's essential. And that's going to wrap up this presentation. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching.